Hello everyone, this is Ravindra Babu. Welcome back to my channel, The Silver Knight is Bionet. In the last part of the video, we were talking about the detailed chemical structure of DNA, but that was incomplete, where we talked about only the three chemical components of a nucleotide. In this video, we were talking about the answers for three questions in order to study the detailed chemical structure of a DNA molecule. Here, these are the questions. The first one is, how these three chemical components combines to form a nucleotide and second one is how these nucleotides makes a DNA strand or a polynucleotide chain and third one is how can these two strands binds to each other to form a complete double stranded DNA molecule first let us let us start with the, the first question here you know very well that a nucleotide is and nothing but it is the combination of three chemical components one is a nitrogen base and another one is a pento sugar and uh, another one is a phosphate group nitrogen base may be either adenine or guanine or cytosine or thymine nothing but a dna molecule is made up of four types of nucleotides Nucleotides having adenine as a nitrogen base, nucleotides having guanine as a nitrogen base, nucleotides having cytosine as a nitrogen base, and nucleotides having thymine as a nitrogen base. In this double stranded DNA molecule, here I am considering this as a nucleotide of one of the strand of double stranded DNA. Here I am considering this nucleotide is having thymine as a nitrogen base. In this part, I want to make you understand the nature of bonding pattern among these three chemical components which finally makes a nucleotide molecule. Let us come here. This is a thymine, a nitrogen base which is a pyrimidine nitrogen base. This nitrogen base thymine binds to pentose sugar by means of a glycosidic bond. This is the glycosidic bond. The glycosidic bond particularly formed between the nitrogen at the first position of nitrogen base and carbon at first position of pentose sugar by the elimination of one molecule of water. Here one molecule of water gets eliminated from this here hydroxyl group of pento sugar and hydrogen of nitrogen base gets released in the form of water and uh, involves in the formation of a glycosidic bond this part of the nucleoside sorry nucleotide lacking a phosphate group is considered to be as a nucleoside so here nucleoside is nothing but nucleoside is nothing but it is a combination of nitrogen base and pento sugar only it lacks a phosphate group if it if it is having phosphate group this would become what nucleotide okay leave over this nucleoside come to complete the structure of a nucleotide here this part of nucleotide in order to become a complete nucleotide it must have a phosphate group here this is the phosphate uh, group this is the phosphate group this phosphate group it binds with the fifth carbon of a pento sugar by means of a phosphoester bond by releasing one molecule of water how let us see here this is a phosphoester bond between a phosphate group and a pento sugar at a fifth carbon here what happens the hydroxyl group of fifth carbon and a hydrogen of a phosphate group gets released in the form of water to make a phosphoester bond okay. here this is what the complete structure of a nucleotide of one strand of dna here we can see there are two bonds in a nucleotide one is a glycosidic bond which is in between a nitrogen base and a pento sugar another one is phosphoester bond that is in between a phosphate group and a pentose sugar 
Now let me explain the answer for the second question. The question is how nucleotides makes a strand of DNA or a polynucleotide chain. In this double stranded DNA molecule, I am considering that this is a nucleotide having cytosine as nitrogen base which is adjacent to thymine nucleotide. Now I want to make you understand how these adjacent nucleotides joins with each other and involves in making of a DNA strand or a polynucleotide chain. Now let us come to this cytosine nucleotide of one strand of DNA. This cytosine nucleotide is having a phosphate group. This phosphate group was already involved in the formation of a phosphoester bond with the fifth carbon of pentose sugar of this cytosine nucleotide. Now the same phosphate group also involves in the formation of another phosphoester bond by joining with the third carbon of a ripento sugar of adjacent nucleotide. See here, this is uh, another phosphoester bond between hydroxyl group of third carbon and hydroxyl group of a phosphate group. Here OH group of pento sugar H of phosphate group gets released in the form of water to make a phosphoester bond. So that two phosphoester bonds are formed in between adjacent nucleotides through a phosphate group here. So we call it as phosphodiester bond, two phosphoester bonds so that phosphodiester bond which joins the adjacent nucleotides of a DNA strand. The formation of this phosphodiester bond occurs in the same way in opposite strand of DNA molecule. Come here. This is adenine nucleotide. This is a phosphate group of adenine nucleotide which was already involved in the formation of a phosphoester bond with the fifth carbon of pentose sugar of this nucleotide. The same phosphate group also involves in the formation of another phosphoester bond with the third carbon of pentose sugar of adjacent nucleotide by the elimination of one molecule of water. So that two phosphoester bonds means a phosphodiester bond joins the adjacent nucleotides. Now when we come to the third question, the question is how two strands of DNA binds to each other to form a complete double stranded DNA molecule. In this double stranded DNA molecule, let me take this as adenine nucleotide and this as a guanine nucleotide. According to the rule of complementarity, a purine adenine always pairs with a, a pyrimidine thymine of opposite strand by means of two hydrogen bonds. Likewise, a purine guanine always pairs with a pyrimidine cytosine of opposite strand by means of three hydrogen bonds. Here let me explain how these hydrogen bonds are established between the nucleotides of opposite strands of DNA. Here this is one strand of DNA and this is another strand of DNA. The adenine nucleotide of this strand always pairs with the thymine nucleotide of its uh, opposite strand by means of two hydrogen bonds. This is one hydrogen bond and this is another hydrogen bond. Nothing but there is a possibility of formation of only two hydrogen bonds between adenine and uh, thymine nucleotides. Likewise, the guanine nucleotides of this strand always pairs with the cytosine nucleotide of this strand by means of three hydrogen bonds. These are the three hydrogen bonds established between a guanine and a cytosine. There is a possibility of only formation of three hydrogen bonds between guanine and a cytosine. In this way, uh, the hydrogen bonds involves in making a complete double stranded DNA molecule. By this chemical structure of DNA, we came to know that 
the dna molecule is having three types of bonds the one is glycosidic bond the first bond is glycosidic bond here these glycosidic bonds are present between what a nitrogen base and a ribose sugar here in the case of purine the glycosidic bond established between nitrogen at ninth position of a purine and a first carbon of a pentose sugar but in the case of pyrimidine the glycosidic bond established between first nitrogen at first position of nitrogen base and a, a first carbon of pentose sugar this is very very important and second type of a bond is phosphodiester bond the second type of bond is phosphodiester bond the phosphodiester bond is formed between a phosphate group formed between a phosphate group and a third and a fifth carbons of pentose sugars pentose sugars of opposite strands sorry pentose sugars of adjacent nucleotides so this is this is a phosphoester bond this is a phosphoester bond nothing but phosphodiester bond established between a phosphate group and a third and a fifth carbons of pentose sugars of adjacent nucleotides and third type of bonding is hydrogen bonds hydrogen bonds these hydrogen bonds are between the nucleotides especially between nitrogen bases of opposite uh, strands here between adenine and uh, thymine there are two hydrogen bonds two hydrogen bonds and between guanine and uh, cytosine there are three hydrogen bonds here the thing is the glycosidic bonds are intranucleotide bonds intranucleotide bonds when we come to phosphodiester bond this is internucleotide bond internucleotide bond when we come to hydrogen bonds these are inter strand bonds of dna molecule by this chemical structure of dna we can also come to know some properties of dna molecule here one among them is a polarity here both the strands of dna shows polarity this is one strand and this is another strand of double stranded dna molecule in this strand of dna consider this is a terminal nucleotide of this dna strand at a one end this terminal nucleotide shows a free phosphate group at a fifth carbon atom of a pentose sugar so that this end of the dna strand having free phosphate group at a fifth carbon atom is said to be as five prime end likewise consider this nucleotide of the same strand is a terminal nucleotide this terminal nucleotide will have a free hydroxyl group at a third carbon atom so that this end of the dna strand is said to be as three prime end three prime end likewise the opposite strand of dna also shows polarity consider this is a terminal nucleotide of this opposite strand which is having a free hydroxyl group at third carbon atom so that this end of the dna strand is said to be as 
3 prime n in the same way when we consider this nucleotide of this strand as a terminal nucleotide at a opposite another end it will have a free phosphate group at a fifth carbon atom so that this end of dna strand is said to be as phi prime end this is what we call polarity likewise the another property of dna is anti parallel nature anti parallel nature in both the strands one strand runs in 5 prime to 3 prime direction but uh, opposite strand runs in 3 prime to 5 prime direction this is what we call anti parallel nature of dna molecule and uh, the third one is complementarity complementarity you know very well the rule of complementarity according this rule of complementarity the nucleotide of adenine of one strand must always face with the nucleotide of thymine of opposite strand by means of two hydrogen bonds likewise the nucleotide of guanine of one strand of dna must always face with the nucleotide of cytosine of opposite strand by means of three hydrogen bonds nothing but if you know the sequence of nucleotides of one strand of double stranded dna automatically you will come to know the sequence of nucleotides of another strand of dna molecule here this complementarity always between a purine and a pyrimidine not between purine and purine not between a pyrimidine and a pyrimidine this specific complementarity between purine and a pyrimidine it maintains the uniform distance between the opposite strands of dna how let me explain this say suppose for example this is a purine nucleotide of one strand this is pyrimidine nucleotide of another strand both are gets binds to each other by means of hydrogen bonds so that the width of dna molecule is always 2 nanometers or 20 angstroms if a purine sorry if a pyrimidine and a pyrimidine of opposite strands gets binds to each other by means of hydrogen bonds then the width of dna molecule may decrease to 1.5 nanometers okay and another example if a purine and purine gets binds to each other by means of hydrogen bonds of opposite strands the width of the dna molecule may decrease increase it to 2.5 nanometers actually these situations cannot happen in dna molecule because in dna always a purine pairs with a pyrimidine and maintains the uniform distance between opposite strands of a dna molecule or uniform width of a dna molecule that is 2 nanometers or 20 angstroms Thanks for watching this video, please like, share and subscribe my channel.